Let's briefly discuss a couple tools in OS X and in Linux. And the two I want to talk about here are the shell or terminal and the force quit option. Now, the shell or terminal is the command line interface in any Linux system. And OS X is very similar to Linux. It's not considered a distribution of Linux, but it's very similar, especially in its representation of the command line. So the shell or terminal or command line interface, it's all going to be the same thing. Let's show how to get into that in each OS. First, we'll go to the uh, OS X. And you can get to the terminal in a variety of ways. One of the easiest ways is to go to the Finder program. Open that guy up. Go to Applications. And we'll scroll down. And you want to go down to Utilities and then down to Terminal. And we can double click on that. That will place that on the dock. And you can also open it from here if you wish. You know, we could close it, but it's still running here. Bring that guy up. And you could also drag and drop that from the finder to your desktop if you wish to have that uh, set there automatically, uh, permanently, I should say. So this is just the background color I chose, but you can modify this as you wish. You can go to the terminal option here once the window's open and go down to preferences. And you can change the different profiles if you wish and change the colors and the font type and all that good stuff. So that's how you do that. You go to the settings from the terminal option. Just have to make sure that that window is open and that that is the active window for that terminal to show up on your menu bar. But this is a command line interface. It's similar to the Windows command prompt, but this is uh, virtually it's Linux. Basically, that's what it is. So you have all those commands. Instead of typing DIR as you would in Windows to see your folders in your current location, you type LS to list those folders and press enter and you'd see we have desktop and documents and downloads and library movies etc if you wanted to find out the name of the computer you could type in host name and i would tell you it's macbook air dot local but you know you know that because that's in by default that's in the prompt it's telling you what that is if you want to find out the ip address you would type if config which is similar to ip config in windows Press enter and you find all the information about your network adapters. And for example, here's the connection that I'm interested in. I'm 192.168.0.206 on this system. You know, and you can use commands like ping. You could ping the uh, router 192.168.0.1 in this case, and it'll tell you if you get replies or not. And that'll keep running by default until you close it. In Windows, you'd close out of these types of cycling utilities by using control C in a Linux based system or OS 10, you'd type control Z or command Z. And, uh, you could clear all this information off the screen. If you wish, you know, in windows that was CLS in a Linux based system or OS 10, it's going to be just clear and press enter. So there's a little bit about the command prompt. Let's show that on the Ubuntu system. And you're going to see, it's going to be very similar. We'll go here now. I'm in Ubuntu 12. And one of the easiest ways to get there is to go to the dashboard, click on dash home. And you see, I have terminal here in the history, but you could also just type terminal. And you have various terminals that you can use here. Generally, I use the one called terminal. And that brings that up. And you can see the username in this case as part of the path and the name of the computer, Ubuntu 1. And so if we do a host name, you'll see that name of the computer. Again, that's in the path. And type, same type of thing. If we do an LS for the folders, we'll see the folders that are in here. IF config tells you about the network adapters. By default, a wired network adapter in Linux is called ETH0. That's short for Ethernet, and zero means the first one. And then you can see the... Uh, IP address for that guy. And that guy's on dot 101. You might also have a wireless network adapter in your Linux system. That would be referred to as WLAN or wireless LAN. And LO is the local loopback. That's that 127.0.0.1 .0 .0 
on IP version 4 or colon colon 1 on IP version 6. So that's what you might see. You might see Ethernet 0 or you might see Ethernet 1 if you have a second wired network adapter, if you're doing network teaming or if you're working with a, a server system. LO, which is the local loopback, and WLAN, which is a wireless adapter. And again, type clear just to clear that information out and exit when you're done. Okay, so that's a little bit about the terminal. Works the same way virtually in Linux and in uh, OS X. Now, the other thing I want to talk about was quitting applications or force quitting. Now, you could always type exit to get out. But if you look down here, the applications are on your uh, dashboard here. And you can right-click an application like this and select quit to close that guy. And then on that will remove that guy altogether when we close it. But let's say an application was causing you some problems. So let's say it was running down here and you couldn't close it in that manner. Let's say it wouldn't quit or you couldn't close the red, you couldn't close it with the red X. You could go to the Apple menu here and choose force quit. And this is also sometimes necessary when you encounter the spinning pinwheel in OS 10 or the hourglass in Linux. Uh, this is a variation of the mouse pointer arrow. That spinning pinwheel is part of your cursor. And it appears when an application either becomes temporarily unresponsive, enters an infinite loop, or it just can't recover for some reason. So if an application freezes or is otherwise not responding properly, you could force that app to close using the force quit application. And so that's again on the Apple menu here. And you could do on the keyboard on a Mac, you could do command option escape to get to this as well. Now, if we click on this, you'll see applications that are running and then you could specify which one. Let's say a third party application such as Spotify was causing problems on the system. We could force quit that guy and then relaunch him. Or say Finder. Finder's open here in the background. We could, let's say that was just not working. And every time we tried to click on a utility or on the time machine or something, we just got that spinning pinwheel. Well, we could go to force quit and select Finder and say relaunch. And we'll say relaunch again. Okay, that closes out of Finder and reopens it and hopefully fixes the problem. If not, then you'll have to restart the system. And so you'd want to go up to your Apple menu and either choose restart or you could do a full shutdown, do a graceful shutdown. You could even pull the power and then plug it back in and restart. If it's a laptop, you could pull the power, pull the battery. If you have one that's removable on your Mac, a lot of them are built in, you know, then restart the system, hit the power button to turn it back on. Hopefully that fixes your problems. If not, you're going to have to take further action and uh, go through some of the possibilities that we talked about in the 901 course, separate course altogether, or finally you'd have to bring it to a uh, Apple authorized repair center.